by Maestro Ryan Kayabya, bringing us the joy of Christmas with two of Miss Maestro Kayabya's original compositions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Upma Squire and Maestro Ryan Kayabya. Sanggol, kalung-kalung ng iyong ina. Munting sanggol, may ningning ang iyong mga mata. Patid mo bang kay raming naghihintay sa'yo? Nananabit ng pagsilang mo. Mga pastol, sa saksapan ay nagpupugay. Nagpupugay. Ay nagaanak
Welcome to today's webinar. This is part of a year-long medical webinar series on aging and longevity, an initiative of the new Signify Sorority in celebration of its 85th year. In cooperation with the UP College of Medicine, the UP Medical Foundation, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation. The beneficiary for this project is the National Institutes of Health Institute on Aging. This webinar series runs every second and last Friday from January to November 2019 and delivers interactive medical lectures by prominent specialists here and abroad on common medical conditions in the geriatric population. The webinars are free and open to all physicians, healthcare professionals, and medical and allied medical students. CPD units for MDs, nurses, and pharmacists will be provided. Registration is free. If you have pre-registered, you only need to sign in for attendance check. Otherwise, please register on-site. Just click on the links for today's webinar at the bottom of the UPM Livestream window or in the description box of FB Live or YouTube Live. This is an important step that you need to do to have your attendance recorded and to receive the link to the evaluation form. Once you sign in for attendance, the post-webinar confirmation email will be sent within 12 to 24 hours and not immediately. To ensure that you receive your certificates in your inbox, please be reminded of the following. Make sure that your details are complete and spelled correctly, especially your names and registered email addresses. Please do not abbreviate. Example, yahoo.com into y.com. Ensure that your email inbox is not full and add these email addresses flashed on your screen to your contacts. Check your spam folder, and if our emails landed there, mark them as not spam. We are now using UP Manila Livestream, FB Live at Aging Webinars, and YouTube Live at Aging Webinars channel. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, kindly refresh the page. For UP Manila Livestream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the live stream window. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes, followed by a question and answer portion. Ask questions or comment by typing into the UP Manila live stream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen, or type into the comments box in FB Live or YouTube Live. A link to an online evaluation form will be sent to your registered email addresses two days after the confirmation email is sent after the webinar. Please answer the online evaluation form to receive your certificate in your registered email inbox around two to four weeks after the webinar, depending on the number of participants and CPD unit approval. The webinar will begin in 10 minutes. 
Please stand by. Welcome to today's webinar. This is part of a year-long medical webinar series on aging and longevity, an initiative of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority in celebration of its 85th year. In cooperation with the UP College of Medicine, the UP Medical Foundation, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation. The beneficiary for this project is the National Institutes of Health Institute on Aging. This webinar series runs every second and last Friday from January to November 2019 and delivers interactive medical lectures by prominent specialists here and abroad on common medical conditions in the geriatric population. The webinars are free and open to all physicians, healthcare professionals, and medical and allied medical students. CPD units for MDs, nurses, and pharmacists will be provided. Registration is free. If you have pre-registered, you only need to sign in for attendance check. Otherwise, please register on-site. Just click on the links for today's webinar at the bottom of the UPM Livestream window or in the description box of FB Live or YouTube Live. This is an important step that you need to do to have your attendance recorded and to receive the link to the evaluation form. Once you sign in for attendance, the post-webinar confirmation email will be sent within 12 to 24 hours and not immediately. To ensure that you receive your certificates in your inbox, please be reminded of the following. Make sure that your details are complete and spelled correctly, especially your names and registered email addresses. Please do not abbreviate. Example, yahoo.com into y.com. Ensure that your email inbox is not full and add these email addresses flashed on your screen to your contacts. Check your spam folder and if our emails landed there, mark them as not spam. We are now using UP Manila Livestream, FB Live at Aging Webinars, and YouTube Live at Aging Webinars channel. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, kindly refresh the page. For UP Manila Livestream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the Livestream window. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes, followed by a question and answer portion. Ask questions or comment by typing into the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen or type into the comments box in FB Live or YouTube Live. A link to an online evaluation form will be sent to your registered email addresses two days after the confirmation email is sent after the webinar. Please answer the online evaluation form to receive your certificate in your registered email inbox around two to four weeks after the webinar, depending on the number of participants and CPD unit approval. The webinar will begin in five minutes. Please stand by.
Welcome to today's webinar. This is part of a year-long medical webinar series on aging and longevity, an initiative of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority in celebration of its 85th year. In cooperation with the UP College of Medicine, the UP Medical Foundation, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation. The beneficiary for this project is the National Institutes of Health Institute on Aging. This webinar series runs every second and last Friday from January to November 2019 and delivers interactive medical lectures by prominent specialists here and abroad on common medical conditions in the geriatric population. The webinars are free and open to all physicians, healthcare professionals, and medical and allied medical students. CPD units for MDs, nurses, and pharmacists will be provided. Registration is free. If you have pre-registered, you only need to sign in for attendance check. Otherwise, please register on-site. Just click on the links for today's webinar at the bottom of the UPM Livestream window or in the description box of FB Live or YouTube Live. This is an important step that you need to do to have your attendance recorded and to receive the link to the evaluation form. Once you sign in for attendance, the post-webinar confirmation email will be sent within 12 to 24 hours and not immediately. To ensure that you receive your certificates in your inbox, please be reminded of the following. Make sure that your details are complete and spelled correctly, especially your names and registered email addresses. Please do not abbreviate. Example, yahoo.com into y.com. Ensure that your email inbox is not full and add these email. Welcome to today's webinar. This is part Good afternoon, everyone. I am Maria Concepcion Sison, New Sigma Phi Sorority, Batch 1996, speaking on behalf of the Aging and Longevity Webinars team of the Mu Sigma Phi Sorority. We are streaming live from the video conference room of the UP Manila Information Management Service. Our time in Manila is now exactly 12 noon. For today's webinar, we have a very relevant topic, and we are privileged to have a distinguished alumna of the UP College of Medicine, class 1996. She finished her residency in internal medicine in Lenox Hill Hospital, New York University Medical Center in 1997, after which she finished her fellowship in pulmonary medicine in Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in 1999 and her fellowship in critical care medicine in the same institute in 2000. She is also a diplomate of the American Board of Internal Medicine. She is an undefeated three-term Congresswoman in the 4th District of Pampanga uh, during the 13th, 14th, and 15th Congress. Currently, she serves as an associate consultant in the Institute of Pulmonary Medicine in St. Luke's Medical Center and an active consultant in Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud and honored to welcome Dr. Anna York Bondok, New Sigma Phi Sorority, Batch 1994. Uh, thanks, Dr. Aconi. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here today. So it's 12.02, mag-start na po tayo on a most interesting topic. At siguro usong-uso rin siya ngayon. Dami nagkakasakit at dami na hospital. So our topic is called Pneumonia in the Elderly. By way of introduction, I work at St. Luke's. I'm a pulmonary and ICU specialist. So let's go. Next slide po. So why is pneumonia more dangerous and why is there a separate topic for pneumonia in the elderly so what we're going to be discussing here is community acquired pneumonia or what sometimes they uh, shorten it to cap or cap so community acquired pneumonia disproportionately affects the the very young and the very old so in very young that is uh, two years and below the very old is our senior citizens and there's a huge amount of data regarding uh, the epidemiology of this 
on how come it's more common in the elderly from the U.S. But I didn't find any local Philippine data. Siguro if we mine the PhilHealth admissions, we will be able to see that there's really a lot of people being admitted for pneumonia. But nevertheless, take it from me, it's common. And it often results, why is it important? Bakit ba may topic na in the elderly and pneumonia lang naman yan? But because of the, the many things that will affect it in elderly persons. First of all, um, it often results in hospitalization as compared to the younger persons. After they get hospitalized, usually malala. So may ICU na yan. After na ICU, na intubate. And after na intubate, there will be high costs for the family and the government. And also, after that, even if they would recover, it can be very debilitating and results in significant morbidity and mortality. So why are the elderly very often affected? Well, they're often affected because, number one, ito dito, predisposing factors, nutritional status. Kumakain ba na matanda? Sometimes they're not eating that well. Some people are just surviving on ensure. So a lot of them may be malnourished and not eating properly and thus losing weight. So once they're malnourished, their immunity goes down. They get the flu, usually viral first, and then superimposed uh, bacterial pneumonia. And then, secondly also possible, predisposing factor is the difficulty swallowing from strokes. There's often difficulty swallowing from those with past strokes or even the healthy are said to be micro-aspirating. There are studies on this, micro-aspirations in the healthy. So this leads to aspiration pneumonia. So may sakat na naman. And then there's also colonization of the oropharyngeal uh, opening. Or, and this is said to be bacteria residing in the oropharynx. There's also further colonization with those with COPD and chronic lung disease. So that can again flare into pneumonia. Again, why is prior antibiotic therapy important? Because uh, too much antibiotics given to the elderly, even if necessary, no, may result in resistant bugs, making antibiotic therapy more difficult. Again, mechanical issues might happen. There's poor nasal ciliary clearance, bad swallowing reflexes. Patients are always lying down and not active. And all of this lead to only one thing, again, pneumonia pa rin. And uh, in the microcellular level, they have poor T cell and B cell function, thus leading to more disease. So next, this is a tricky disease. It is very difficult to diagnose. Actually, it's difficult to both under and over diagnose. Kasi nangyayari siya. So the exact diagnosis is difficult. Minsan, hindi mo napapansin, may pneumonia na pala. Kung minsan, treat ka naman ng treat, hindi pala pneumonia. But then you just have to treat because baka may pneumonia. So talagang issue sa lahat ng ICU patients. So I'll go on to that later, both the under and over diagnosis. And then wala na lang talagang malinaw dito. In the elderly, the WBC may not rise due to their immunocompromised state, as I just mentioned. Sometimes the inflammation is not as strong, so hindi siya. Hindi siya talaga nagsaspark ng what we normally expect in someone with an infection. This is usually due to age. Sometimes there can be no fever. And the symptoms can be very confusing. Sometimes they're just not eating, they don't feel well, they feel weak, which could lead to anything. Leads you to to conclude that it could be anything and worse it could be pneumonia so talaga siyang uh, wala talagang malinaw dito you just really have to have a high index of suspicion know that it's common because if you miss it it may be too late so of course there's a lot of, there's also issues with treatment and sequelae what does this mean of course, the elderly are more likely to be hospitalized, more likely to be in the ICU, to be intubated, and unfortunately, to pass away. So we have to have realistic goals with the relatives and with ourselves to us, their doctors. And for those who survive, it may not even be a good outcome. Those with advanced age may really suffer a loss of significant functional status requiring additional assistance, rehabilitation, and care upon discharge. Because every day in the ICU means loss of muscle mass. So Lola and Lola will really have a difficult time returning to what they were before they entered the ICU. And again, I wanted to discuss, it's also more difficult to treat the elderly because as patients, they may be more sensitive to different antibiotics. Ang dami nilang iniinom. 
And then, marami pa rin silang ibang problema like diabetes, COPD, heart disease, possible cancer, chemotherapy. And then, of course, aside from treating the pneumonia, then you have to treat the, lot, the other comorbidities. So, talaga mag-ahalo po yung mga gamot dito. And then, because of the number of diseases, you also need to have help. You're probably going to have a nephrologist, a cardiologist, an endocrinologist. So, we all know that when there's lots of comorbidities, there's going to be lots of medicines. And while lots of comorbidities also mean lots of doctors into a team approach. And of course, pag marami ng gamot, nagpapatong-patong. At para marami ng doktor, eh, just ko kumugulo ang usapan. So that is what makes it really difficult because there's a lot of things that go into the treatment of pneumonia, which are actually sometimes the cause of pneumonia, the overdiagnosis, the underdiagnosis, nagahalo-halo po lahat yan, and it really needs to be straightened out kung ano ba talaga nangyari. So, pneumonia is a huge topic. Pwede nga itong three-day conference. And I actually built my career on this. So, hanggang siyang huge. So, for today, I would suggest that we limit it to diagnosis and simple treatment as an outpatient and a few words about prevention and vaccination because I think that's something that we all would like to, to stress because of the huge sequelae, siguro i-prevent na lang natin kung pwede. And then I'll just touch on the principles of management quickly. So some statistics about pneumonia just to get us to a good start. First of all, nakamamatay siya talaga. It's supposed to be the eighth leading cause of death. But actually, in a lot of people who pass away, it's hard to separate talaga because it really goes into every ICU issue. It is very common. Sabi nga nila, community acquired pneumonia, 70% are above 65 years of age. So talagang common siya sa mga may edad. It is very tricky, as I have said earlier. So many doctors have been fooled both in the diagnosis and in the response to treatment. Again, there are ethical questions that will come in, especially for those at an advanced age. So kailangan talagang realistic kayo. And again, prognostication is difficult. Some of those that you least expect will recover. I've seen people like halos comatose na din biglang after two days naglalakad na. It's amazing. And some of them will really pass away despite your best efforts. And it's hard also to say who's going to fall into group A and who's going to fall into group B. And so you really need to be realistic. You always best to prepare the family and also best to prepare yourself. So let's go into the diagnosis or the differential diagnosis. Most, the most common pathogens are listed, the one in uh, aqua blue. These are streptococcus pneumoniae, it's the most common. There are other atypicals like H. haemophilus influenza, uh, C. pneumoniae, and mycoplasma. So the most common talaga are the first two, streptococcus pneumoniae and haemophilus pneumoniae. But the frequency of the others is also picking up. So please consider these special factors in your patients which may lead you to suspect other pathogens and consequently lead you to give different empirical antibiotics. For example, alcoholic bat umiinom ba? So that's another difficult question to elicit kasi syempre sensitive topic. Pero kailangan pag-usapan eh. Why? Because you, then you're going to be treating for anaerobes, oral, oral flora, klebsiella, mycobacterium TB, TB, strep. So, iba-iba ko yung empiric antibiotics for this. You cannot use the common, common antibiotics. So, you have to know that. And again, the question, is the patient on steroids? Rheumatoid arthritis ba? Other steroidal uh, conditions that require steroids. Diabetes. Immunocompromised yung mga yan. Cancer chemotherapy. So, we, pumapasok dito is, of course, the usual. And then you have gram negatives. And of course, you have MTB. I've seen this a lot. Some of the diabetic patients have both TB and bacterial pneumonia. So you have to ask. And again, are they aspirating? Or did anyone see them aspirate? Or were they micro-aspirating who nobody knows about? So again, anaerobic coverage is important. Are they smokers? Because their, their lungs may be colonized already with bacteria. If they have chronic bronchitis and COPD, then maybe they took antibiotics less than three months before they met you. So again, that will tailor your choice of antibiotics and you need to know that and ask that. Are they smokers? Iba rin ang ano nila. So for the, for the COPD you have and smokers, you have to widen your treatment because of the different 
pathogens like the atypical pneumonia is more common, chlamydia, H. influenzae, Legionella is important, Moraxella, strep pneumonia. So history and is important because as I'm going to discuss later, the pathogen is often not going to be identified despite extensive studies. Kahit ano pong gawin nyo, hindi nyo malalaman kung ano po yung nag-cause noon. Please, so please consider this list that I mentioned. It's greatly abbreviated. There are actually so many other possible considerations that we should know about, including HIV status, upon which you're going to treat for PCP pneumonia and TB. Um, traveling all over the world, iba-ibang places, may issue pa yon. So, bawat lugar may specific pneumonia. Merong African, merong ano talaga mga bayan. Then, lung abscess, because anaerobes also for lung abscess. In case uh, prior antibiotic use that I mentioned, then hindi mo pwedeng gamitin the same antibiotics that they used three months before. And then you also have to ask like comorbidities. Cancer chemotherapy is very important. That's why I put it there. Why? Because I trained in a cancer hospital, so please, please, not all infiltrates plus fever equals pneumonia. So then you end up giving everything to be sure, including steroids, and that's just a horrible situation to be in. So talagang mahirap siyang malaman. Then you end up having to do bronchoscopy muna. And then there's hotel or ship travel, whether they live in a dorm, issue pa yan. Um, the ship travel, Legionella. Exposure to farm animals, meron pa. Exposure to birds, hispoplasma. Exposure to cats. And the list is goes on and on. So I just placed the most common lang na itatanong. But you have to ask all of this. And you have to know the corresponding pathogens. Because if you know the corresponding pathogens, then that will tailor also the, the kind of treatment that you're going to give. Kasi meron kaming patient dati. Akala lang namin TB. Ah, no, actually, akala namin it was histoplasma pneumonia, which we were treating. And then it turned out pala that, uh, so we were treating him with antifungals, and the patient was uh, having chills. So we thought that the antifungals were only, it was a reaction to the antifungals. E yung pala may TB din yung pasyente. So we missed two corresponding pneumonias in the patient. And it subsequently, the patient died of, the treat, of what we were not treating, despite our best efforts to treat one of the pneumonias that we knew. So it's possible to have two kinds. So I just placed the most common. Pero pag-isipan nyo to because for every item on this long, long list, the treatment is different. Okay? Talagang haba niya. So viral pneumonia is also one of the most common. Uh, what are the viruses? There are RSV, adenovirus. Siguro the most common is influenza and there's also para-influenza. So the question is, do you need to diagnose specifically for viral? Like, may testing ba? May PCR yan and dami-dami testing. The question, the answer is, you don't really need to do so, and it's not commonly done. So most people will not really develop full-blown full blown viral pneumonia, but it's actually the bacterial superinfection that we treat with antibiotics. So again, I'd like to say this, it, the, it's, on the it's on the bottom line, I know. This can be confusing for people who are not pulmonologists or for beginners or just for anyone because the name is so similar. Haemophilus influenza is a bacteria, okay? And influenza is a virus preventable with vaccination. So, ibayon, don't be confused. So, how, so how does a viral infection, if, if it's not a full-blown viral infection, how does it need... How does, how does it become a bacterial pneumonia? The viral infection will lead you to become immunocompromised. Once you become immunocompromised, madali na magkaroon ng bacterial pneumonia. And that's how the whole thing starts. So the question is, can we, can we distinguish viral pneumonia from bacterial pneumonia? It's actually, I would the x-ray will not tell you whether it's bacterial or it's viral. It won't. The WBC is supposed to go up during viral, but again, I can't tell you that it's the same because it also goes down kung sobrang septic. So in the U.S., people, during flu season, and they're not getting better with bacterial uh, antibacterials in the U.S., they would treat with viral antivirals. Here, it's not so commonly done. But I, I, I personally have not seen a fully diagnosed viral pneumonia yet. But most often, as I mentioned, it's the virus leading to an immune, weakened immune system and a bacterial superinfection that will lead you to be hospitalized. Okay, so questions. Tingnan niyo to and tell me what you think. This is a 75-year-old Previously lucid and independent person. And with, uh, nagpakuha kayo ng ano, WBC count, 
it's low to normal. He's now presenting in the ER. He's confused. He doesn't know the day. You are called by the emergency room resident. He has a normal respiratory rate. Could this person have pneumonia? Okay. So we go to the next case. This is an 80-year-old man. He just stopped eating one week ago. He feels weak. He has no fever, he's not coughing. And the relatives are calling you on the phone. Are you going to tell them, eh, wala naman hong lagnat, iwanan na lang ko natin sa bahay and pilitin yung uminom ng Ensure. Is that the proper assessment? For the first one, would you call neuro or what would you do? Confused nga siya, di ba? So, it sounds like a neurologist. Okay, an 85-year-old as uh, asthma patient of yours, exacerbation ngayon, wheezing, sitting in the clinic, temperature is 36.7. The WBC is normal. O ano, bibigyan nyo na steroids, ipauwiin nyo. So, tingnan natin. Could any of this be pneumonia? Yes, they could all be pneumonia. Despite having said so, if you call the neuro and you don't get a chest, if you call the neuro, and sometimes a chest actually can even be normal, Okay, if you just call a neuro and said, mukhang na-stroke ko itong si Lolo or Lola, nako. You can do that, but again, don't forget, maybe they could have pneumonia. As for the person who wasn't eating and feeling weak, eh huwag niyong pilitin kung uminom na Ensure yun. Yayan niyong pumunta sa clinic para makita niyo kung mismo. And then thirdly, the person who was wheezing, it could be that their asthma exacerbation could be due to a pneumonia also. So better look at that also. So again, this is an ancient quote no, by uh, Dr. William Osler. And he said, in old age, pneumonia may be latent, coming on without a chill. The cough and expectoration are slight. The physical signs are ill-defined and changeable. And the constitutional symptoms are all out of proportion. Importantly, Fever may be absent. So basically, it could be anything or it could be pneumonia. At pag nakuli kayo doon, masama yan. So diagnosis, first of all, I would suggest that we all really have a high index of suspicion in the elderly. If you're suspicious, pa-CBC nyo na and pa-chest x-ray. But again, don't be misled by a normal CBC. People always tell me, mom, the CBC is normal, but they look terrible. So... That could even be worse because they could be nearly septic. Chest x-ray could be normal. Repeat in 48 hours. Outpatients, no need to culture. But in the ER, better culture first. Blood culture, grab stain. The urinary antigen testing, procalcitonin, I'll discuss that. It's not necessarily done. Please, ipapulse ox nyo yung pasyente kasi baka kailangan ng oxygen. Ito lang ah. This is the most important take home. Please do not routinely do ABGs. Masakit ito talaga. I swear, masakit ito. And this is really torturing the elderly. It may be necessary for, for septics, but I would rather do a lactate level. I've seen people do ABGs like just writing. Ikaw ko yama ABG ko. It's not <laughs> correct. Hanggat maari, please don't do it. Differential diagnosis. DVT and COPD exacerbations are very common. You might miss this, so don't forget that. Because DVT is low fever, dyspnea, normal chest, predisposing factors. No, ko paskan yun na yan. COPD exacerbation. Treat na lang muna first, and then withdraw the antibiotics later. For there are support tools. These are the PSI, CURB 65, CRB 65. Na natin pumtahan yan. ATS guidelines. Meron din, you can just read that online. I would suggest to treat empirically, and this is what everyone does. And these are the guidelines. Treat empirically because the pathogen is off, often not recognized. Sometimes the yield is only 30%, despite your best efforts. So how to treat outpatient, no comorbidities, first time, give Zitromax or doxycycline, macrolides. If you have exposure to antibiotics within six months, they don't like to take Zitromax, levofloxacine, augmentin combined with Zitromax. Some people write Bactrim or Cotri. It doesn't cover all the organisms, but maybe use as an alternative if there's a recent use of any of the above. Wedding choice. Five to seven, five days or seven to 10 days, Zitromax is a three day, depends on severity. I didn't go into the inpatient because that's another topic altogether. How to prevent flu vaccine yearly. 
prevents against the flu virus. It's not 100%. Meron pa rin because there are ano, different strains of the flu and not they, they just combine the data from last year and they don't get everything. But it's better than nothing. It's an inactive vaccine. You cannot develop flu from this. Adults 50 years old and above and those with pre-existing illness or just anyone would like to be vaccinated. There are now two pneumonia vaccines. This is also very confusing. Previously, because there was only one. Ngayon, dalawa na. So there's the Prevnar 13, also known as the PCV, and the Pneumovax 23, also known as the PPV. Dati isa lang. So give the Prevnar first, there's a better immune response, and give the Pneumovax after one year. Um, this is like a one-time one dosing for most of this. And it's a different schedule for the immunocompromised. Isa article din yan. So, mahaba. I mean, there are now two. You can. It's better to receive two. So the take home on this le in this lecture, no, it is common and deadly. Pneumonia is common and deadly, and it should be at the back of your mind all the time when you see someone in the ER. Treat quickly and empirically, because within hours may pwedeng mangyari if you're taking your time. And then if you're planning to treat culture na kaagad, okay? And don't be misled by, as I mentioned, the other diagnostic. Uh, don't be misled, no fever, normal WBC, normal chest X-ray, yun ako treat pa rin if you really feel like it. Hospitalize when necessary. But remember, the hospital is not necessarily the best place for an elderly patient. Kasi may bagong pneumonia na tayo dyan. Yan yung tinatawag na hospital acquired. Mas malaking problema yan. Okay, and again, I'd like to stress this as an ICU patient, and people don't understand this. Know when to be honest with the family. If you're hit by an 85-year-old with lots of infiltrates, be realistic, okay? But again, be hopeful pa rin. And again, lastly, vaccinate patients. It's very, very, very helpful. So that's it for uh, community-acquired pneumonia in the elderly. And hopefully, um, you picked something up and don't hesitate to ask. Take home. Don't forget, pneumonia is a possibility behind almost every elderly person and treat it if you really feel it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Anna York Bondok, for that uh, very comprehensive and highly informative talk. We now have 594 viewings from FB Live, 56 viewings from YouTube Live, and from UP Manila live stream, we have uh, 27 viewers. Okay, so now the floor is open for questions. And I think we already have some questions uh, here with us. Okay, first question here. Uh, I know, uh, Anna, you've talked about uh, giving the PCV13 and PrEP uh, and the Pneumovax. The question is, uh, well, maybe you can just reiterate. No, I, How about Prevenar 13 recommendation? I got three shots. Is it okay? Although wala nakalagay dito kung anong age niya. We have three vaccines here in Saudi Arabia. We have a viewer from Saudi Arabia. So that I got three shots. How about Numo 23 vaccine? I got that as well. What is the ideal recommendation for these two anti-pneumonia vaccines? Marami yung nagtatanong eh. Ako nga rin, inalab ko rin. Um... Dapat unahin yung ano eh, Prevnar 13. Actually, at saka hindi siya dapat pagsabayin. Okay, I, I wanted to say this. You can take the flu and any of the, either the 13 and the 23 together. But the 13 and the 23 should not be taken at the same time. So, may, ang haba na recommendations na ito eh. Kasi meron pa na you don't have to wait until an elderly age. Like for example, if you're diabetic, you have COPD, you're taking cancer chemotherapy, may recommendation sila to give it earlier. So, uh, and then, for example, may recommendation. So, dapat unahin si Prevnar 13. Kasi mas malaki si immune response mo if you take it first and then yung isa susunod. So, usually one month. Pero, meron din silang recommendation yung augmented Kung halimbawa talagang magkikimo ka na or what, ano, pwede siyang, there's a shortened, uh, there's a shortened uh, protocol for that. I, it's very technical. I don't want to get into the details. And then there's an issue pa na if you got uh, the 13 and the 23 before the age of 65, kailang ulitin si 23 after you reach 65. So magulo. Okay. It's a whole protocol. Ano? Mm -hmm. But ang take, take, take home na lang dito, and there are now two. You cannot take them together. Mm -hmm. It's better for you to have two vaccines. Mm -hmm. 
So labis na yung nakuha niya because she got three. Baka naman <laughs> flu yung isa. That's what oh, I'm thinking. Okay. Or baka he got the two before the age of 65 and then next 65 siya. So yun yung pangatlo. The 23. Okay. So, and again, no, the flu yearly yan. Ito talagang, ano lang, two shots lang. Okay. Unless you got it before the age of 65, you need to recreate. So, yun. Okay, so a flu vaccine yearly and then, uh, and then the, 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 the 23 one mga, dose lang. Uh-oh. 13 and, and then 23. Okay. Uh-oh. 13 muna, then 23. Yes. Swerte naman yun sa Saudi Libre. Oo nga. Sana dito rin. No? Eventually. Okay, next question from uh, here we have uh, Chinita Lapachera. Which type of pneumonia is most common in the elderly and which is the most serious? That's sila serious. Right. <laughs> Siguro the okay. worst, ah. And the, the, this, I mean, this is, uh, I didn't discuss this in my topic. Mm-hmm. I would say the worst kind of pneumonia is hospital acquired. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that's also common in the elderly. Mm-hmm. Kasi the elderly are the ones most commonly hospitalized, ba? So sila yung nagkakaroon ng hospital acquired pneumonia. And why is the worst talaga? Kasi syempre gram next oh, na yun. Goodness. Eh yung, pag may gram negatives ka na, yung mga gamot mo, hindi siya oral. Tapos, ano talaga, may gram-negative coverage. Once you get gram-negative coverage na, and then, ano, MRSA, lahat-lahat na yan, yung, ano, yung kidney function mo na, apektuhan na. So, that is one of the main issues, which I fail to discuss also, why is it important, uh, is, uh, big deal in the elderly. I didn't go into hospital acquired eh. Pero mm-hmm. once you get into the the higher kinds of drugs, first of mm-hmm. all, just ko, napakamahal. And then, number two is, ano rin, um, yung sequelae talaga kasi powerful na talaga yung drugs and then ano yung kidney mo talaga matatamaan dyan, especially magetamizing and things like that na kung minsan pag talaga kailangan mo na it's, it's, it's very harmful. Mm-hmm. So talagang the most serious talaga is hospital acquired pneumonia. I did not mention it. As, as I said, I'm just confining myself na lang to community acquired kasi... Right. And siguro talawang buong, uh, in buong lectures in hospital acquired. But the most serious hospital acquired, the most common for hospital acquired gram megs. In the US, MRSA. Thank God sa Pilipinas, hindi pa siya ano, masyadong, ano, pero nagkakaroon na talaga ng MRSA. Yeah. So because of this, because of the more uh, grave hospital acquired pneumonia, would you recommend as much as possible to treat the elderly in their homes? Well, it depends naman kung talaga hinihingal na no choice. What I don't like, and ito kasi sa Pilipinas, sa US kasi, pag hinospitalize mo isang pasyente, mawawala ka ng pera. Sa Pilipinas, the moment ma-hospital mo yung isang pasyente, magkakaroon ka ng maraming pera. So yung mga tao, ang hihilig na i-hospital yung mga tao kahit isang ubo lang. Tapos tinatakot yung mga matatanda. Eh baka ako matuloy huwi si Lola, so what's wrong with ano, staying in the hospital for 24 to 8, 48 hours? Ng pera. The doctor, oh, okay. the hospital, the field health will oh, pay you. So, ganun okay. talaga. Iba yung ano natin, iba yung mindset natin. So, sometimes there is a tendency sa Pilipinas na i-hospitalize yung mga tao. Sige ho, may, meron pa nga nakikiusap sa akin, pwede mo bang ma-ICU lang ng isang araw para mabantayan? The answer is no. No big N-O. But of course, if you need to be hospitalized naman, right. kailangan talaga. Pero don't rush it kasi talaga may iba kong ginagawang hotel yung hospital because mm-hmm. of the field health reimbursement. Do not do that. Kasi baka magkaroon po ng hospital acquired pneumonia po yung inyong pasyente. Mm-hmm. And from a previously healthy person na inuubo right. lang ho na pwede kong outpatient lang yung treatment. Mm-hmm. Pero ang dami ho kasing naninigurado mm-hmm. and nakakabul rin ho ng reimbursement, eh, nialagay niyo yung mga right. tao sa hospital. So, before then, nasa hospital, it's no, safer. No, it's not safe. Right. Yung, if you need to be in the hospital, you need to be in the hospital. But if you don't need to be in the hospital, you should not be put there for reimbursement or just to make everybody feel better na may nagbabantay sa iyo sa loob ng hospital. That's very common among Filipinos. Here is another question from uh, Danica Gabon. At what temperature of fever do you uh, consider giving antibiotics empirically for fever in the elderly? Minsan nga, wala fever. Okay. So there's no fever, mm-hmm. ano, there's no, there's no fever like the moment, like 39, eh, bigyan na antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, kung naglalagnat, mm-hmm. it's actually better than hindi naglalagnat kasi sometimes that's bad, eh. Um, pag naglalagnat po, it, it all depends on ano po yung sakit ng tao previously. 
kung okay lang naman ho at napakalakas naman ho kahapon, then nag-38, pwede naman ho obserbahan mo na once or twice. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, kung nakarating na po, then bigla na lang ho nag-39.5. Ibang issue na rin ho yun. So, what I, my answer to this question is, it's multifactorial. We cannot judge anything on antibiotics on the on the fever alone. Kasi baka sabihin mo, hindi na kumakain, wala na fever, o huwag natin bigyan ng antibiotics si wala namang fever, o yung pala may pulmonya. So, what I'm trying to say is, assess the whole person. And aside from assessing the whole person, assess the history. Ano ba kinagawa niya kahapon? So that can really help you a lot. Kasi yung changes talaga from day to day in an elderly person is important. So yun. So full assessment and maybe oh, oh, diagnostics. Oo, tingnan mo muna. Oo, oh, oh. wag wa, so wa, sure. mo sabihin na, ano kasi, ah, wala lagnat, ah, sige, ho, pa. Hindi ganun. Okay. Ito, this is very interesting. From Grace Serrano. How do I get an x-ray, if it's necessary, for an 85-year-old patient who is ambulant, but will not follow instructions because of Alzheimer's disease. How do you get an X-ray? Yeah. Dali nyo sa hospital. <laughs> At bahala na po yung X-ray tech. They are trained po to do that. Okay. Opo. Um, the ano ho, um, X-ray techs and nurses are very kind. They understand that not everybody and nasa tama pong kaisipan. And they're also very understanding po. And they will really do your best po to help you. Uh, siguro po what I could suggest po, no, instead of bring them to the hospital po kaagad, is maybe bring them to their primary care physician. Kasi at least parang, you know, alam, alam ng doktor yung condition po ni Lolo or ni Lola. And um, it's much better sometimes for the for the elderly patient na sometimes hindi po masyado malinaw ang kanilang kaisipan. Sometimes it helps them to have a familiar person na they know who will tell them, uh, Sir, ma'am, kailangan na po tayo magpa-X-ray. And since kilala po nila yung doktor, sometimes it can be difficult po kasi to, to be told by a stranger. Yun po. And nakakatakot din po for an Alzheimer's patient to be just dragged to the hospital. So sometimes it really helps po na imit po muna si primary care doctor who I'm hoping that they have a good relationship with. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's good. From Brenda Singson, when can a culture and sensitivity test of sputum done or when will you recommend it isn't is it the more reliable is it the more reliable accurate form of diagnosis of what pathogens are causing the illness so do you have do you need it done or is it useless um uh, for for outpatients po wag na just start Pero siyempre naman kung talagang, alimbawa po, marami naman kung lumalabas, you might want to culture it, ano po. Pero kung wala naman, kasi sometimes wala talaga lumalabas, I just start na ng antibiotics. For, I would say, no, for outpatients, no need naman ho to gram stain ang culture. Unless talagang, obviously, may dinudura na, eh, di, pati gram stain yun na, no? Pero, ano ho, kung wala naman, itreat nyo na lang ho ng, ano, ng empirically and orally. Ngayon ho, ito lang ah, kung nasa ER po yung pasyente and mukhang IV meds na ho tayo, better try, try, try po to do it. How to do, ano ho, gram stain and culture kung wala lumalabas, okay? One of the ways that you can do this and respiratory therapists do this and in order po din namin is to nebulize muna. Kasi sometimes sobrang tuyo po dito. So it can help po to provide a moist environment. And na kuminsan ho may lumalabas. Pero kung talagang wala ho, wala na ho tayong magagawa. And again, um, despite best efforts po, up to 30 to 40 percent lang po talaga ang mag-grow. So... So that's why we empirically treat. Them. Oh, that's why we treat empirically. Pero uh, as much as possible, kung may lumalabas, try and get it. Kasi talaga okay. nakakatulong din eh. Right. Kasi pag may na-isolate tayo, then we can start removing all the, ano, the harmful, yung broad spectrum, pwedeng inaro. Ay, bagong, ta- isa pang topic yun eh, when to narrow antibiotics, whether you should narrow. And kung may lakas loob kang mag-naro, isang issue pa yan. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, But hindi again, siya useless. Oh, hindi siya useless. Oh, in, okay. in the U.S., there is a cost issue to that. Because in the U.S., you have only a set amount. Parang, you're given a set amount kasi on how much you're supposed to spend per person. Mm-hmm. So, if you can narrow the antibiotics, it will also help. Okay. Uh, here naman from, I'm not sure if you'll know the answer or your secretary will. Uh, Doctor, I mean, we know what's the dif- uh, difference between the two pneumonia vaccines and their price. Actually, the Ay, wala price. Wala presyo at the moment. Hindi ka nagbibili. So, yung difference from the two pneumonia vaccines. Hindi, yung coverage po, 13 okay. and 23. Okay. Pero, pwede pa asin ba pwedeng ano na lang? 
33. Para isa. Hindi, oo. 32, oo. But para isa na lang. Hindi, yung isa, ano, it's MSD. I was trying to call up and find out which are available sa Pilipinas eh. I was told both. Both, yes. Oo. Kasi ginugulo ako ng mga tao ngayon kasi they're confused bakit may 13 but may 23. Ano din una? Ano yung pangalawa? Ganun. So, okay. So, I hope that's clear na yun nga. Oh, meron dalawa ngayon. Unahin si 13. 13. Pwedeng 13 and and uh, the flu vaccine together and then after one month si 23. Okay. Uh, this is from Al Sarte. If a patient is vaccinated for pneumococcal vaccine and influenza vaccine, how long is the validity of the vaccine? Is it the lifetime immunity? Si influenza po yearly. I'll give you the story of the influenza vaccine. Ano po yan eh, um, scientists, they, they take po all this, the most common strains from last year. And then gumagawa po sila ng vaccine for that. At yun po yung binabakuna into persons. So... It's a study based on what was common last year and the year before. Yung pinaka, ano, hindi talaga nila kaya na lahat ng strains, marami siya. So sometimes there will be issues na I've heard also, how come I got the flu vaccine but I got the flu? Kasi hindi siya talaga 100%. Kasi nga, parang it's a trial and error kung ano yung nauso last year. Yun yung bibigay nila. But pwede may lumabas na bago. So yun yung ano. So yearly po talaga si flu vaccine. Okay? Si Pneumovax, dati every 10 years yun. Pero with the two, parang yung recommendation ngayon is the, the 13 and the 23, yun na yun. And then depending on the, what age you got the 23. Kasi yung 23 po pwedeng ulitin after you reach the age of 65. So yun po. But I, I've been receiving a lot of questions about that. Yeah, so I actually had to read po a, ano eh, a journal on uh, vaccination. Kasi sa pulmo po, most of the pulmo, sinasabi lang vaccinate. So I, need, I needed to find out the details. I had to read a vaccine journal about this. Kasi, ano, um, iba siya. Tapos, talaga, ano, um, nakalagay, if the PSV, PPSV 23 was given after the age of 65, and then the PCV, 13 should be given after one year. Ang haba po na sa technical recommendation. Mm -hmm. Sasakit lang po yung ulo nyo. Ako, so, so meron, tailored uh, to the individual. Oo, no? tailored so, po. Ano yun? Tanong na lang nila yung ganyan. Tanong na lang nila yung kanyang Hindi siya, ano, may, may, ano siya, may, right. uh, bababaan pong, mm -hmm. ano. So, basta siguro importante, uh -oh. they ask about the new Basta you need to get the two. flu vaccine. Yun. And then try to get the two and the flu vaccine yearly. Okay. From oh, okay, from Paul Miranda, is it okay to have a pneumo vaccine for an immunocompromised patient, and does it prevent uh, him or her to have pneumonia? Yes, dapat po talaga. Um, kailangan po. Ayan po. Let me read you. In the presence of immunocompromised conditions, um, a minimum of eight weeks is recommended between ano PCV thirteen and PPS PPSV twenty three. So, mara, and then, ano po, between 19 to 64 years of age, you should get the pneumovax. Yun po. So, talagang, ano, if you're going to undergo cancer chemotherapy or anything like that po, you have diabetes, dapat po okay. talaga. Even if you haven't reached the age of 65. From Peña Randa, Gigi, when is the best time or months to have a flu vaccine yes. shot for the elderly? Actually, sa US po kasi, there's what they call the flu season. So talagang may scheduling siya. Mm -hmm. E dito po sa Pilipinas, wala po tayong season. Any day, you can get the flu. So, pag na, and then the issue pa ko about supply, kasi kung minsan nauubusan. So, kung meron ng flu vaccine for that year, pabakuna na po kayo. Ngayon, if you're based in the US, most people would vaccinate po in the summer or in the autumn before po lumamig. So, yun right. po yung ano dun. So, yun. ever tayo sa oh, summer oh, months. Oo, meron. Oh, Oo. Oh. Pero sa Pilipinas po, wala naman yung pinipiling panahon. So, pag na-available na, ito's nauubusan pa muna supply. So, kung meron po, babakunin na po kayo. Right. Basta meron, babakuna. Uh, you've mentioned about 10 years and another question about the PPV, Anna. Oh, is po. PPV, is PPV oh, oh. So generally given every five years or one dose only? Ang ano po dati, kasi po may history pa yan eh, binasa ko nga po yung history <laughs> ng babakuna eh. Okay. Um, binasa ko po siya, no? Um... Ang recommendation ng po ngayon is depende. Um, 
Ito po, when the PPS V23 is administered before the age of 65, mm -hmm. may recommendations po eh, at least 5 years. Okay. Meron Every po five ganun. Years. Oo. Okay. Tingnan nyo na lang po. Talawang dami na ko. Confuse ako rin na confuse eh. Oh. Kasi dati isa lang and then every 10 years and nagkaroon ng dalawa. And then there's a decision tree po for mm -hmm. both. So, magulo. Right. I think para sa pedya kasi yung yung mococcal conjugate vaccine. So, oh. that we can give it below 2 years of age kasi yung PPS, uh, yung mococcal polysaccharide uh -oh. vaccine, yung Numovax, given yan 2 years and above lang. Uh -oh. Okay. So, here naman, what does the hospital do, at least in your hospital, to prevent or cut down the incidence of hospital-acquired pneumonia? Is there a way to disinfect the air we breathe, especially when you work in the hospital? Uh, actually, no, actually, ano yan ah, uh, that, that's a good question. Kasi po, uh, for healthcare workers, mm -hmm. kailangan po, uh, mandatory po talaga yung flu vaccination. And when I used to work po sa US, pinapatawag po talaga kami ng ospital. Kasi, uh, parang you consider that, that is a very good question. Kasi biro mo, everyday na-expose ka sa mga taong may sakit. So talagang possibility rin, you really have to be a healthy person. So talagang ano yan, that is uh, sa hospital workers po talaga, dapat mandatory po talaga ang flu, si flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would suggest that po dito po sa lahat ng hospital. Sa PGH ba, binibigyan ko ang bakuna? Uh, minsan. Ah, uh, from you. <laughs> Hindi, pero wala silang, oh, ano, wala silang oh, uh, employee wala, health. No, um, Alam mo, maganda pa ang PGH kasi, open air siya. Merong mga modern hospitals ngayon na talagang ano, nagsisirculate na lang yung air. It's not that naku, hindi maganda. So, uh, um, dapat talaga. Free, free vaccine for the students? From you, but from the hospital? Sa hospital, wala. Sometimes. O, tingnan mo. Dyan, so, talagang we'll ako, happen. talagang dapat yun. Dapat okay. talaga. Uh -huh. So, that's a good question, no? Yung the air we breathe. As hospital workers. Second question is, what do we do to prevent hospital acquired pneumonia? One of the most common talaga is hand washing. And it has been shown talaga that, I'm sorry, doctors though were the worst offenders pay. Not even the nurse is the doctor. That was may study pa that shows that natatakot na yung mga nurse, nasabihan daw yung mga doktor, lalo na yung mga big time, kasi nagagalit. Tapos may issue pa actually. There was an issue in St. Luke's that people were not washing their white coat. I'm sorry. It's really disgusting. Pero nagka-issue gano'n na, ano daw, um, meron pa nga, ano yung sleeves eh. So, so, ano, and then may issue pa na yung stethoscope. Naku, Diyos ko. So, ano. So there are many ways. Oh, talaga. Number one talaga is please wash your hands between each and every patient. And sa amin, I came from a hospital that had a sink outside every door. So talagang may sink siya talaga doon sa labas. Mm -hmm. So yung ICU din namin, may sink sa bawat ICU. So kailangan hugasan mo talaga yung kamay mo pagpasok mo doon. Mm -hmm. Pero dito, I've seen not all the rooms have sinks outside. In fact, majority don't have. Meron lang sila nung pinapump. So, I guess you can just pump your hands. Pero the best talaga, kasi yung mechanical, ano po na hand washing nun dyan eh. Mm -hmm. And then number two, some ICUs are really colonized. Um, mm -hmm. There have been cases po talaga na, at, at meron tinatawag na infection control po sa hospital, tinetest-test po nila yun eh. Mm -hmm. Meron po talagang mga nasa-shutdown. I think you know this also sa mga kids. Mm -hmm. Kung minsan sina-shutdown si ICU para oh. talagang linisin eh. Kasi talagang naka-colonize na siya eh. mm -hmm. So, wala pa naman ako narinig na ganyan sa Pilipinas. But again, not all hospitals have infection control. Pero one thing that I have good news naman dito sa Pilipinas that I'd like to say, um, Siguro sobrang widespread ang antibiotics use sa US na meron na nang namamatay na ng ano eh candidemia from ano fungal na dati hindi sila ano hindi sila um, deadly ngayon may namamatay ng ganon there are articles I would have to say no having worked in ICU in the US and then later on transferring to ICU in Philippines mas mabakterya talaga sa US yung MRSA grabe na doon talagang mm -hmm. vancomycin to the mm -hmm. max na talaga doon uh, I would have to say the Philippines is not as heavily colonized and which is really good kasi um, pag na-heavily colonized na talaga, ang hirap. Ang hirap talaga. And then once, ang dami-dami mo nang binigay na antibiotics, ang kalaban mo naman is C. diff. So that's uh, C. diff colitis. 
So, malaking problema ah, din yan. Oo, oh, oh, grabe talaga. Kasi magda-diarrhea na yung mga yan from too much antibiotics. So, parang nasira yung kanilang normal flora from too much of antibiotics ang nag-take over na yung dangerous flora. So, hindi na siya talaga. So, I think this yun. is also uh, relevant to the, uh -huh. our setting. No? Not all patients from Hilary Poselli, not all patients with CAP could afford good medications. What's the cheapest meds for CAP that you could recommend? Merong naglalagay na high dose. I read there. May nakasulat pa dito. High dose amoxicillin. Pero ako, hindi ko gusto yun eh. And hindi na siya talaga binibigay. Parang so, yun talaga yung recommendation <laughs> eh. Uh, that's why I guess some people give Cotri, mas mura si Cotri. Though some people, doxycycline is possible also. It's not that expensive. Pero again, in private practice talaga, people don't give so much doxy. Pero actually, if you want to give doxycycline, pwede rin. Kasi recommendation naman siya talaga. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, mas mahal si Zitromax talaga. Pero again, ano, I'd like to stress this. Um... Yung three-day regimen talaga, ano, malaking bagay yun sa ano, yung compliance. Mm -hmm. So... Kaya yung macro lines, it's Oo, oh, oh, yun ang maganda dun eh. Yun talaga. Um, talagang, ano, maganda talaga yun. Mm -hmm. Yan. Okay, but, uh, basta importante rin, rational antibiotic I, sorry, use. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'd like to stress this lang, ano. I mentioned na, ano, the two vaccines, the 13 and the 23, they're ano pala. I said one month. It was my mistake. It should be 12 months. Yung um, gap nila. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pero, so that's a year. Ano, yeah, it should be a year. Okay. Pero, pwede silang, merong naka-recommendation na, ano, merong recommendation na if you're immunocompromised, baka pag-usapan nyo na lang with the infectious disease na baka ma-ano. Mas, uh, pwedeng mas closer yung ah, gap mas nila. Yung okay. Yeah. This is from uh, Rowena and we know from Ma'am Weng. For okay. elderly psoriatic patients who will be receiving biologics, oh, 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 is there a need to give flu and pneumococcal oh, oh. vaccines? Yes, oo. Oh, oh. Ang tanong for younger ones, that is a good question. So siguro I would give na rin eh. Kung ganun. Kasi sa elderly, given na yon, kasi elderly sila. Just by the age, nahulog na sila doon. Ang question talaga is the younger ones. So, kung ano, uh, medyo high dose pa, so siguro, ganun na nga rin. Immunocompromise na sila. So, yeah. We're talking about vaccines, but how about for those predisposed to pneumonia? How about uh, prophylactic antibiotics? Is there such a thing for, for example, those who will who have problems swallowing, na may stroke, or... Have you, is there a I know, the only one that we give ano, continuous antibiotics is chronic bronchitis at saka COPD. Okay. Yun talagang na-colonize sila. Those are for those with chronic lung diseases. Pero, uh, tapos yan pa, rotating pa yan eh. Um, so not so much. Uh, walang those. prophylactic talaga kung hindi kami chronic bronchitis. Okay. Don't do that kasi um, ang mangyayari sa'yo, you're gonna breed a superbug. Yeah, resistant. Oh, oh, magkakaroon ka ng resistant, ano. Okay. So, yun. And this is from Brenda Medina Singson. Oh, last na uh, lang. Last question. <laughs> Although, may question Since pa the... sana ako. <laughs> Sige, <laughs> hagol nila lang. Uh, should, nila the, lang should the elderly with fever of a known origin be suspected of having yes, pneumonia? Yes, definitely. Go. Three. Okay. Is there and anything to boost the immune Culture okay. to the max and then three. Is there anything to boost the immune res immune uh, response or mechanism of the uh, elderly with regard to uh, like using Kumain probiotics or herbal supplements? Nako, wow. <laughs> um, kumain lang ng mabuti kasi your own immunity dapat yan. Wala naman talaga nakaka-boost ng immunity drama lang nila yan. Okay. Boost their income meron. <laughs> so kumain ng mabuti. Oo, oh, oh, try it. Try it. And then, yeah, and then <laughs> ano, be active. Kasi lying down really will give you pneumonia. Just by the act of lying down na lang. Okay. Kasi you cannot clear your, ano eh, parang tapos yung, kung nag-aspirate ka na nakaupo, mas lalo kung aspirate na nakahiga. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think uh, we'll end the, uh, the, the question and answer portion. And once again, we thank Dr. Bondok for enlightening us uh, with tanong, your no? answers. Tanong, Parang eh. kulang pa actually yung oh, oh, time. Eh. Maybe so, we talaga. should have a part two for, for this topic. We would like to acknowledge our sponsor for today's webinar, Work Sharp and Dome. Okay, and uh, yeah, in summary, 
uh, let me just uh, mention my learning points and maybe your learning points also. Some things that we really learned from the webinar today. First is that uh, the elderly is really at risk for pneumonia. So uh, because of that, prevention is definitely key. So vaccinate, vaccinate mm -hmm. the elderly may rhyme. And that number two, diagnosis is quite tricky oh, and yeah. we better play it safe. And therefore we must consider uh, pneumonia for every, for any symptom for that matter or any change in the activity in the elderly. And the third is that a treatment is unique. The elderly is a unique population. Therefore, the treatment should be tailored to the elderly in, ter in terms of the etiology of the pneumonia, antibiotics to start, diagnostics to order, no to ABG uh, as much as possible, and that uh, we should always give, of course, our, our tender and loving care to the elderly. So thank you again, Dr. Bondok, for giving us your precious time and sharing your ex expertise with our audience today. And uh, I think that uh, ends it. Uh, please join us again on November 8th, Friday, for treatment of diabetes in older adults by Dr. Mirna Buena Luz Sedorante. Please also join the UP Med webinars every Wednesday. And stay tuned for some other reminders. The Aging and Longevity Medical Webinars team of the Mu Sigma Phi Sorority would like to thank our partners, the UP College of Medicine, UP Medical Foundation, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation. We are also grateful to support from the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, UP Manila Information Management Service, and BOST ASTI, and the PRC Board of Nursing. Most of all, we thank you, our participants, for spending your lunch hour with us. To receive your certificates of attendance, kindly answer the evaluation through the link that will be sent to your email addresses after you sign the attendance sheet for today's webinar. The certificates will then be emailed to your registered email addresses within two to four weeks. Here is a quick view of the schedule of our upcoming webinars. For more details and updates, please check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash agingwebinars and our Twitter timeline at twitter.com slash agingwebinars. Today's webinar recording and all webinar recordings may be viewed at YouTube at Aging Webinars channel. We are also announcing the launch of the OB Pearls book. Get your copies now. Thank you and have a great day.